morning, everyone. I'm here to talk about the Venus Gate in Virgo, the third eye chakra, as well as the upcoming eclipse in Libra. And the Venus Gate will be exact in about an hour um, in Virgo, and she's conjunct Black Moon Lilith and Juno as well. Um, but Black Moon Lilith is really important here. And she's also sextiling Mars and the South Node and Haumea. So there's this invitation between the masculine and the feminine to come into balance. And also they both are doing some shadow work. Um, we have this Venus gate opposing Saturn and Pisces and Mars is squaring Pluto as well, as well as the nodes. So um, with this gate being in the third eye chakra, it's about releasing the veils um, of our self-perception. And we're always thinking about, I was thinking about the third eye chakra, and sometimes you can interpret it as releasing the veils to see truth outside of you, and that can be a part of it. But then you kind of release another veil where you look and see where is that within me. And it's just this sort of reciprocal journey, right? So it's interesting, the Sabian symbol um, for two degrees Virgo is a large white cross upraised. We awaken to sacredness. And I found it really interesting with all the things that are going on in the world right now. And also this sort of merging of masculine and feminine. When we, when we um, find harmony between the left side and the right side of the brain, between the masculine and the feminine, that's when the third eye awakens. That's when it's activated. And when I was thinking of the third eye, I also was brought back to this um, journey I went through with Sekhmet. I'm working with Sekhmet through these Venus gates and I'm loving it, it's amazing. But in one of the journeys, I met Thoth and he gave me an onk. And he said, look through the loop of the onk. And there's a special lens there that will actually help you see the pure essence of nature, the pure essence of anything you look at through this. And it was really interesting because at the time, when I was looking outside, I mean, it's it's always beautiful here where I live, I feel like, but sometimes I get kind of down by what's going on in the sky, um, the air quality, a lot of the plants are looking a little bit sickly. And so he was reminding me to look through that and see the true essence because um, that's what we need to do with ourselves as well, is to really remember where we come from and remember that about other people as well. So there's this interesting thing with the nodes as well about, um, you know, the other and the self. And we're heading more towards discovering what our true divine self is. And the North Node is real close to Chiron. And I feel like Chiron is really asking us to become our own shamans and um it's interesting i've heard other people talking about this recently on podcasts and things so i really feel that energy running through the collective and it's about healing a lot of these inner child wounds if you think about how this venus cycle is in leo that's the child the north node in aries that's the child and it feels like we're being asked to forget everything we thought we knew and come back to life with a fresh perspective and to remember what it was like when we were kids and we didn't have like a lot of this conditioning that tells us how different we all are. We are different and we're unique, but that doesn't condition us in a way to see that as a bad thing, you know? Um, so yeah, I feel like this is another wiping away of the veil. Another thing going on here between Venus and Mars and Black Moon Lilith is, uh, I feel like we're being called to heal our womb spaces and our relationship with sexuality and intimacy. And, um, this requires a lot of vulnerability, um, 
maybe allowing yourself to be witnessed in whatever it is that whatever fears that you may have or um, or anger or whatever it is I feel there's an invitation for us to really do some womb healing and I've been I wanted to share um, I've been working with some oils and working on this myself and two oils that came up this might have been a week ago or so but they they correlate with these astrological uh, transits so well are geranium and clary sage so I just put them together in a small roller bottle because I honestly normally am not crazy about these oils and I wasn't sure how long I would use them. So I just made like a tiny little concoction and I've been anointing my womb space and my heart. And sometimes I'll even put a little bit on my crown. And clary sage means clear eye. So it connects you with your intuition um it helps you get unstuck and it really connects you with the divine feminine as well and then geranium is a great oil for self-love self-respect self-acceptance and uh, a generosity of giving and receiving love so a lot of times these blocks can be um us putting walls up so that it makes it so we can't receive and when you can't receive you can't really give from a a full cup right so there's these walls that kind of have to be dissolved and I'm I'm seeing Saturn in Pisces and he's in Pisces and like giving us this opportunity to allow those walls to dissolve a little bit to see the whole to see how we're all connected and to have more compassion and he's He's coming up on, um, he's at one degree now. He's coming up on zero in the next month. He'll go direct. And I, I feel like Saturn, our karma, he's been going through a life between lives review through Pisces. And this is connected with the, the masculine and the feminine. He's opposite Venus and he's trining Mars. So there's this medicine on offer and then with Pluto squaring Mars, you know, each sign is challenged and also supported. And it's sort of just like this, the third eye is like, okay, wipe away whatever lies you're telling yourself that is not allowing you to see the truth of the situation. What are your fears? What are your limitations? How can you see them? be with them, witness them, even perhaps allow yourself to be witnessed in them and then release them so you can get back to this right relation. Um, it's very karmic and Black Moon Lilith is this, um, she's got this energy of not wanting to be dominated. Um, there's a lot of I think about how whatever the gods went through kind of get can get imprinted on us. And um, she's inviting us to look at that story, um, you know, where Adam wanted to essentially, I don't want to get into it too much because I feel like I'm not going to tell it right. But it's um, about overcoming the fear of domination, being able to surrender, to feel safe to surrender. And then the masculine is being forced to see where he's been out of balance and where um, he needs to heal to be able to be that safe container. And so this isn't just in relationship, it's both. It's within us and then it also reflects in our relationships. And it feels like a time that these two signs could really work some things out. But if they're not will willing to accept that release of the veils of illusion, then it's gonna be harder. And that's where I come into the eclipse. <laughs> so if, um, and we'll see too, who knows? Like, I feel like I'm already working on these things. We'll see what the eclipse brings. But um, if it's not something that we're addressing, then the eclipse is really going to highlight it because uh, it's in 20 degree, 22 degrees Libra. Um, so 
well, when you round up for the Sabian symbols. And 22 is the number of the Magdalene. Actually, I'm gonna pull a card from my Magdalene deck. Um, and the Sabian symbol is a child giving birds a drink at the fountain and expressing compassion whenever we feel it. So we're really being asked to open up our perspective, to widen our perspective and have compassion, to share our resources, to share our heart, to release the walls where they need to be released, but also to find that inner self-respect and self-love that allows you to know when you might need to put a boundary in place as well. It's finding the balance, Libra. So um, Mercury is involved in this eclipse as well. And oh, I feel like he's uh, giving us some inspiration to help us get back into a creative flow. Let's see what Magdalene has for us. Sword. Oh, wow. So the sword is about the truth. It's cutting through the bullshit. <laughs> and um, I just, I'm a member of uh, this divine writing club. And one of the archetypes we were exploring was the initiator and her tool is the sword. And I have to tell you, it's interesting. I feel like when I was exploring this archetype, there was such a thick veil, like it felt so Neptunian. There were just, my my ego did not want to see where I had been lying to myself, you know? Like it just wanted to move past it, create the new, don't worry about releasing, just, um, just keep going, right? But sometimes we need the sword to come through to like cut through to the truth. And sometimes that comes up in our relationships. Sometimes we can't see it without that mirror. We can't see it without someone else's reflection. And um, so how can we allow that and allow ourselves to really entertain that voice that's like, I don't want to look. Like <laughs> the voice that says, I don't want to look. I'm so scared. We just need to let that little voice like say everything that it's thinking and feeling and express it. And when we do that, it feels like it's cleared a lot of times. So um, the sword will bring us back into alignment. And I love how there's this light above her, her crown chakra as well. And she's point, she's got her sword pointed to the earth. So she's grounded, connected to reality. Hmm. So perhaps this eclipse is going to help us ground back into what is real. And this age of that we're transforming into, this age of Aquarius, is interesting because um, so much of our reality has to do with our stories and our beliefs and, and information. And so what stories are we telling ourselves that aren't true and are actually holding us back from our full potential, you know? Um, and sometimes it's, it's tough to look at those stories. All right. Ooh, Durga, boundaries. Look at that, I've never pulled her before. Mm -hmm. And this is all about, it's interesting, even look at the, look at the sun on her, behind her, it looks like an eclipse, almost. Oh, that's so cool. I'm going to look her up. Ooh, okay. When threatened by demons, I fiercely protect myself with all that I am, with all that I have from deep within. I call forth all that I need. I am the inaccessible, for I place myself beyond the reach of all that would destroy me, all that would annihilate me, all that tries to wound me. I am the unapproachable, for nothing can get at me that I do not willingly let in. I dance my dance of oneness, only with what supports me, nurtures me, loves me. For all that does not, I say, approach at your own risk. This is all about the self-love and the self-respect. And... 
um, says, in the battle between the gods and the anti-gods or demons, none of the gods could destroy Durga, so they went to Devi and asked for help. Mounting a tiger and brandishing her fearsome weapons, she attacked the demon, who changed from one terrifying form into another until Devi slew him when he transformed into a buffalo. In remembrance of the great battle, Devi took the name of Durga. You've called Durga into your life to help you create boundaries. What are you taking inside that should remain outside? How are you not protecting yourself, your life, or your time? Is the statement, no, I can't do this right now, I need to take care of myself, part of your vocabulary? Perhaps you feel dumped on by others. Are you feeling pulled off center by demands to give and give and give till there's nothing left for yourself? Durga is here to assist you in nurturing wholeness by creating and fixing the limits of your personal space. Establishing clear boundaries is an act of self-love. Having no boundaries gives others the message that you are limitless and want to be treated in a limitless way. No one is limitless. There are places where we get hurt, places where we are vulnerable, places that need to be treated with care. Durga says that boundaries are vital because they let others know who you are and where you stand. Wow. So maybe that's actually something Lilith is, is teaching us as well. I was thinking of a softening of Lilith, but it actually, with these messages of the sword and Durga, it actually feels more like a putting your foot down kind of thing. I'm taking note of that. Um, all right. And I always love to pull a card from my Rose Oracle on a Venus gate. So, what lessons? Actually, I want to ask, what do we need to see more clearly on this Venus gate? And this eclipse. The second bloom. A second chance. It's never too late. New possibilities. So if we haven't addressed these things, we're getting, <laughs> we always have another chance. Everything comes up again and again and again until we do it. But there may be creations you've had in mind that you haven't been able to fulfill yet. Um, or yeah, I think a lot of us have a lot of creative visions and new projects and there's still, we still have to dissolve some of this stuff that is not true that holds us back from fulfilling those things. So this feels like a second chance to get back at that and create a new rhythm. Um, oh, and I have one more deck here. I was like, I knew I had another deck. I got a new deck that I am loving. Mists of Avalon Oracle by Rose and Sarah. My husband really likes it too. Um, so, the second bloom. I'm gonna ask, what are we getting a second chance at? I am just like, it's really, the energy is so interesting. And the other thing I didn't mention is that Neptune is still in this configuration with Pluto and Uranus. There's a lot of higher consciousness uh, helping us right now. There's a lot of assistance from higher realms. If we can meditate and get in touch with our intuition, we can find really wise um, advice and wisdom from those energies which are a part of us. So, okay, what are we getting a second chance at? Connection, truth, clarity, source, the tour. Look at the rabbit. The rabbit's all about fertility, the spiral, the labyrinth. This is another chance for us to go within and to really um, discover the truth of who we are, the truth of who everyone is. And in knowing that truth, um, understanding when some things are unacceptable as well for that for us to um, expose ourselves to 
Wow, I love the sky too. There's all these spirals. I'm gonna look in the book real quick for this one because this is a new deck to me. Two. How interesting too. It's at it's the two card and um, the Sabian symbols at two degrees for this Venus gate. You are on a quest for greater self-understanding and spiritual enlightenment. Remain focused and aligned with your spiritual growth and intention. You are now ready to raise your energetic vibration. Reconnect with your deepest self. There is wonder and magic within your reach. All you need is to have faith. Spiritual seeker, enter the great hill, the pinnacle portal to Avalon. Ooh, the sea's waves once lapped against the tor, the great hill, and the highest point of the Isle of Avalon. Rising above, high above the green pastures of Somerset, the Tor revives the myth of King Arthur in his resting place, where he lies until his country calls for him, and he will rule over England once more. When you choose the card of the Tor, know that you are connected to Source, to Spirit, to your highest self, to all things visible and invisible. Prepare yourself for greater self-awareness. Don't look behind you at what your life once was, but focus on what your life can be. You are asked to show inner strength as you enter through the misty summit of the Great Hill. The Tor is a place of great magic and awe and was once believed to hide an entrance to the other world, known as Anwen, where fairies lived. It is where the Lord of the Underworld, the King of the Fairies, could pass between the two worlds. The Tor asks that you be inspired to seek greater self-knowledge and be ready to receive ancient wisdom. Work on your spiritual development, but upon your spiritual path, be aware that along the way you may encounter obstacles, exits instead of entrances, and weariness, and you may lose sight of the big picture. Don't be discouraged. Keep focused and move forward one step at a time. Remain aligned with your soul's intention. The Archangel Michael on the tower above the tour protects and shields you from self-doubt. Don't give up when success is just within your reach. Like pilgrims who once walked the labyrinth path to the Tor, know you are at one with the land and the goddess. You are protected by a greater power. You are never alone. There is infinite wisdom within you. Trust your intuition that is bestowed upon you by the entrusted magical guardians of Avalon. Wow, so this is about coming into a deeper trust as well. A deeper trust of the divine and a deeper trust of our perception of it. And um, I'm definitely feeling that. I was going through some of my past journal entries this morning of like Akashic Records I've done for myself. And and um, just, I don't know, I was kind of looking back for a minute. Um, and I, I was like, wow, this is really good advice <laughs> that I'm accessing in the records. And, you know, sometimes we need to take things more seriously and actually apply it too, right? So, um, this is like that, that, that balance of the masculine and the feminine opening to receive trusting and then taking action and applying it and protecting our creations as well is what I'm hearing. But, um, okay. One last thing. I pulled a mudra card for the third eye and I pulled 33 inner witness and it says, my inner witness leads me to perfect equanimity. And the, this is for self-study, clarity, and spaciousness. It relaxes the muscles of the face and jaw, lengthens the breath, and supports cervical spine alignment. So you join the tips of all fingers together, pointing upward, base of the palms together, soften the knuckles away from each other, align the thumbs, and bend from the tip to the knuckle facing inward. So... Essentially, your thumbs are like this, and it's like this, and then you just relax your arms. And you can sit and breathe with that, see what comes through, or you can focus on this intention. My inner wet witness leads me to perfect equanimity. And um, yeah, I hope that these messages were supportive. I am... Dare I say I'm looking forward to more clarity. <laughs> um, but I feel like that's where we got to get, you know. And um, 
yeah, I think that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful Venus gate and eclipse and sending you lots of love. Bye.